So thank you for joining us today, everybody. Uh, I'm your uh, substitute host. Uh, Allie Cookson is away uh, traveling on some training, so I'll be filling in for her. And uh, obviously, today we're talking about the ESEA demographics report. Uh, I'm Mike Mikrit. Um, probably recognize my voice from the help desk. But uh, yeah, we've also got uh, Drew Mitchell with us, Alex Newman, and Gina Forner as well. So let's get started here. Let's go back here. Oh, my mouse is going crazy. Please hold. There we go. Okay. Alrighty. <laughs> so uh, this report, I'm just going over some um, upcoming webinars and other trainings that we're going to be doing. Um, so we already did our main schools uh, webinar, and that is uh, that's going to be opening up tomorrow for everybody to start completing their main schools uh, annual submissions. That's something all SAUs will need to do. That's how we know what grades you're going to have next year. Um, if there was any address changes, building changes, grade changes. Uh, that's where all of that stuff comes from is that report that you guys fill out. Um, so it's very critical that we kind of have that information pretty well ahead of time. That way we can get everything built out, make sure that there's nothing we need to do um, ahead of next school year. So please be very prompt on that report if you can. Um, it's going to be open for a bit and it'll be due the end of July at the uh, absolute latest. And then obviously today we're talking about ESEA demographics report that will be opening up live for you all tomorrow. And then we'd like to have those submissions in by middle of June on the 15th. We're going to be doing an end of year reporting webinar uh, just to kind of talk about uh, exiting students, um, the various other quarterly reports that will be due at that time. Um, so there's no there is no report per se for the end of year reporting. It's just the that series of activities that we all got to do at the end of the year. So we'll be doing a webinar uh, next week for that one. And uh, those reports, those end of year reports, those will either be due at the end of June or in the case of attendance and truancy, uh, they'll be due in the middle of July because we've got to wait until we get all the way through June before, you know, tallying up attendance. So. And then uh, the week after that, we're going to be just talking of doing a, a webinar here for uh, exiting students for the end of year. Uh, once again, no report for that per se, but uh, it's just uh, a lot of good information. So we'll be talking about graduation, kind of dropout reporting as well in that context um, for how things will get tallied up in the fall. And then we'll uh, lastly, we'll finish it off with a special ed exit report. That'll be on June 4th. Go over that one. So mark your calendars. It'll be great. Um, all of these reports and including today's instructions, uh, you can get off our help desk website. I'm sure most of you have probably been there once or twice. I'll uh, be under that data reporting instructions tile. Uh, there is the link. Um, and I believe. I believe you guys can download this PowerPoint presentation after the, the presentation if you really want it. But um, yeah, all those links are already up on the website. And now we can get kind of right into the ESEA demographics report. So this one, uh, we're specifically going to be looking at uh, students enrolled with you on May 27th. Uh, so as we know, we are not at May 27th yet. So what will happen, uh, the report is going to open tomorrow for you all to get in there, take a preliminary look at it, kind of see, uh, get a lay of the land. Um, but you will not be able to certify this report until we actually get to the 27th. Um, so once again, we're not going to have you certified data um, that hasn't happened yet. So uh, that's just kind of the flow here. So don't be alarmed when you can't certify for two more weeks, but you can still get in, kind of start working through the data, making sure everything's good. And uh, very simple slide. Uh, so if you have publicly funded kids, uh, you will need to do this report. Because this is uh, the data that will be fueling uh, the ESSA dashboard that we post up on the website. So um, we're also, in addition to determining testing participation, um, it's also going to be determining almost like a, a May count, if you will, uh, for that ESSA dashboard. So it is going to be collecting your other student demographics. Uh, we'll get into that later, but there's more than just the testing uh, that we collect with this report. So. 
And we kind of already uh, went over this, but here's a calendar view of it. So yeah, report's gonna open tomorrow. You guys will pretty much have a, you know, a week, week and a half to kind of get things in order. And then on the once we hit the 27th, um, now we know what the day is. Now you guys can say for certainty what students you had on May 27th, since we are now there. And then you guys will be able to certify. And then uh, we're hoping to have everybody in by June 15th. And uh, so to get to this report, uh, it is going to be in NEO. So you will need uh, student data access to get here. If you are tasked with doing this report and do not have student data access, please have your superintendent fill out our lovely access request form that is on our help desk page. That way we can get you that access so you can get in there. And once you have access, you can log into NEO, go under student data up in the heading up top, go into student reports. And then luckily ESCA demographics is right up top. Uh, there's gonna be two reports. We have the certification report, which will be your aggregate totals. This is the one that your superintendent goes to to click the certify button. The detail report, this is the one where it's going to list uh, individual students, what tests we believe they should have taken, um, all of their individual information. So uh, those are the two ways to get around to it. And um, there is links to the detail report from the certification page. There is not a link going back to the certification page once you're in the detail report though. And so here we have gone into the certification report. And we're going to have uh, some columns going across the top. Uh, we're going to be looking at science, math, ELA, and access. And basically, we have um, split it into attending counts and responsible counts. So um, respond, the difference being, you know, responsible, maybe kids that you've got outplaced um, at some other special purpose school, um, out of state school, some other facility that's not one of your own buildings, but you are ultimately still responsible for making sure that they tested. So we just kind of break those two out for you, uh, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, and then likewise, when we report the data on the dashboard, um, it's gonna be all by responsible counts. So for your, when we're reporting your grades for say your district, um, we're including all your responsible kids in that count. So just once again, this is just a way for you guys to review this information before we you know, post it. And uh, with the certification page, you're pretty much just making sure that the counts um, you know, are correct. This is once again, the one the superintendent certifies. Um, and here are the links to the uh, detail reports. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, these actually both go to the same report. Um, and then there is just a, uh, there's a column on there for attending or responsible, but. Uh, scrolling down on the certification page, um, we'll give you a breakdown of all of the um, counts for each by each grade. So if you notice, there's no PK, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, or 9, 10, 12, because those are not testing grades. So they are not tallied in the testing totals. So it's only counting those kids here. Uh, and then likewise with your uh, EL, ML learners, I believe we're going to be updating this for ML to you know, be consistent with the, the uh, naming conventions. Uh, those will just give you your ten uh, counts there. And then once we get to this very bottom section, uh, other accountability indicators, um, we are no longer in the only testing grade cat, uh, territory. So this is going to be counts for all of your students that are these criteria. That's what I was alluding to before, is that when we load this data onto the dashboard, um, we're also going to be pulling um, you know, your um, economic disadvantage counts, homeless, military students um, for that dashboard. So we kind of do a quick little check and just tally up those demographics while we're here doing this report. Um, so these are not these are not only your um, tested students. This is all of your students for this little section here. So that's a very common thing that people get confused on. 
uh, but we do use that data um, for the dashboard. Uh, but if it all looks good, and you guys, as the uh, you know data specialist, have gotten everything nice and tidy, uh, your superintendent can go and hit that certify, submit the DOE button starting on the 27th, and that will do it. Uh, switching over, taking a look at the detail side of things. I mean, that room is always on my list because um, there's not a new generation. This, this way they have a fan. For uh, this one, sorry, I just had to mute somebody there. Um, so this is going to be the student level uh, information for the report. So probably the one you guys will be looking at um, initially because you want to come in here and more or less you're trying to make sure that you that only the kids that you need to have tested are are getting accounted for. Um, one thing I would say, um, a, com a common thing that comes up is uh, home instruction students that let's say they want to just come in, you know, Real quick, they want to just come in and test. Um, so ideally, what you guys would do would do a one day enrollment in Synergy for them. Um, we would pick up that enrollment, get them loaded into uh, the testing platform. You can test them. Once they've tested, you would want to exit that enrollment in Synergy for a one day. Um, that way they do not show on this report because this, once again, is only looking at kids that were enrolled on May 27th. So for those home instruction or you know private school kids or something that just want to come with come over with you to test, just do the one day. They should be able to test, but then they should not show on this report. Um, so that's just kind of the stuff you guys will want to be looking for is things like that. Um, the rest of it should be pretty straightforward. Because um, yeah, it's really just going to be a, if they're if they're active in synergy with you on five twenty seven, um, then they'll be on this report. So if we kind of keep coming through here. This is just going to go over some options. You can um, do a search for a student ID or a name, um, whatever you want to look for. You've got a, um, a save export button if you want to download this. Um, you know, in a CSV file, a little easier to work with uh, for sure. And then um, we did build it into the report, though, that you've got some filters on the columns and you can filter, um, you yeah, know, if you just want to see real quick. Um, you can filter some of this stuff. And then this is just scrolling over to the right. There's a lot of columns on here. Um, the way that it's built out is if we believe a student should have tested for that report or we're going to be looking at them for your participation rates, uh, we're going to put a little asterisk in the column for the test that we believe they should have tested for based on their grade. Um, so if you don't see an asterisk, it means we're not considering them as needing to test. And um, once again, this report, when you're looking at the detail view, um, it is going to pick up all your kids. So, um, you know, second graders, kindergartners, uh, 12th graders are all going to be on here. But the key is, you know, looking at what they should have tested for. So. And then once again, we've just got all of the other those demographic. Um, counts as well. So, you know, homeless military foster and et cetera. Um, quick note on foster because it's a it's a common question. Um, the foster care is not something that you guys tell us or upload to Synergy. It's nowhere you can't market anywhere um, with those kids. Um, we get them on a daily or a weekly list from DHHS. And so we already know who those kids are. And so we we're doing a match from, you know, their list to what we have in Synergy to flag those kids. So um, if you think that there's something off with that, if there's somebody's marked yes or no, and you think it should be the other, just um, email our help desk. Uh, we can look into it. But um, and then we can go down the whole uh, foster care rabbit hole because there's there's reasons why and why not they might be marked um, depending on, you know, if they've been placed or if they're um, with relatives, for instance, they may not necessarily be foster care ward of the state. Um, so, yeah. But that's more or less the detailed report. Um, and then Ellie had a few notes they wanted to cover. So, yeah, with um, with the 27th being Memorial Day this year, um, if you have kiddos that are moving districts over that weekend, uh, just coordinate with each other. Um, we'll, we'll take the same stance that we kind of took for October. Um, 
like if, if a student was with you the entire year and then they're they're going to be starting a new district on you know technically may 28th um, that new district would want to enroll that student for may 28th since the 27th is not going to be a school day and then we would let the their previous district uh, would be the ones to track them on the uh, ESA report here makes sense you know we're not going to have a have a student be with one district the entire year and then you know another district pick them up the day before just to you know do that so and then um when you're looking at the certification page as well um for your your counts for those totals they the numbers are only going to be your district full academic year kids so they've got to be continuously enrolled in the district from October 1st to May 27th. And once again, that's just because that's how the reporting works. It's what um, the feds, how they're how they're keeping track of everything. So kids got to be enrolled the base more or less that entire period. And then if they're enrolled the entire period, then we'll say, OK, we're going to uh, be looking at this kid to do the ultimate reporting on. Um, so just be aware of that. So if you had a kid start middle of the year, um, you know, they're still going to have an asterisk saying that they need to test. So they're going to have that, but they're not going to be a full academic year student. So they're not going to be, they're not going to be in your district reported totals, essentially. Um, that's how they, once again, that's just how the feds have decided they want to do it. So, um, and then likewise, you know, once again, kids exited prior to the 27th, they're not counted on the report. So they have to be enrolled on 527. And yep, only the superintendent can certify it. But that is just a couple of notes. And that is more or less it. Um, we've got our contact info here, obviously. If you got any you know, questions on the report, shoot them over to our help desk, give us a call. Um, there's our, our website once again. And then I think we're just going to open it up here to some questions. Um, if you guys have any, we can we are happy to talk about them here. And if you want, you can just um, you can either use the chat box um, up in Teams here to type them in, or if you like, um, feel free to unmute and um, we can chat. Yeah, the uh, the only we the only question we had is just that the the dates were for 2022, and yeah, this Ali had put this report together just to stage some data, so it wasn't any actual live information. So just yeah, a couple of just a couple of things you know to watch out for just with the totals because I know it's. It's pretty easy um, for you guys to get kind of hung up on trying to match these exact numbers. Um, once again, it's you've, you've really got to do a lot of filtering. Like uh, this report that we have built out is not exactly simple. You know, we've got to look. Okay, was the student enrolled on October first? Were they completely enrolled through May twenty seventh? Okay, then we're going to include them in this grid here. Um, likewise, we do not include FTE five kids. Um, I believe I believe homeschoolers, if they if they were enrolled for the full period, um, they would technically count as well. Um, so there's there's a lot of things kind of moving on behind the scenes um, to get the get to these numbers. So I wouldn't really focus so much on matching the exact numbers. Um, I would I would mainly be concerned with looking through your list of students and um, once again knowing knowing what students you shouldn't be on the report and making sure that they're not on here. Um, that that would be more how I would approach this, because um, yeah, you could, yeah, it, you could you could spend a lot of time trying to get every single column, every single thing to match. Um, or yeah, if, if you if you know that your synergy data is good, um, then the report should be good. So this is another piece on how to approach it. And um, likewise, with on that note, you know, with all the most of the reporting we do, you know, when we're looking at um, the special ed counts, the ML counts, you know, um, making a list, filtering it out by those groups, and then passing off the list of special ed, you know, the kids that show special ed, yes. Um, 
you know, say here, special ed, you can just filter on this column, special ed, yes or no. Filter on the yeses, um, make that list, give it to your special ed director. Be like, hey, these are the kids that are showing special ed. Is there, you know, does this look right to you? Is there anybody missing? You know, they might be able, they're, they're going to know those kids better than, you know, you probably will. And, um, and that's kind of how you always want to look at some of this stuff, you know, use your past your homeless list up to your McKinney Vento liaison, um, and, you know, and so on. So, um, you know, use the, use the folks because uh, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't get caught because the right people aren't, don't have their eyes on.